Hey guys, welcome to another wonderful episode of Things Wonderful World. I'm very excited today. A couple of weeks ago, I had a phone call from a lady who needed some help in finding some not so rare, but reasonably rareish trees here in the Danong Ranges. That is the Southern Sassafras tree. So why was she asking me to help her find these trees? Well, you see, she breeds butterflies. And there's one particular caterpillar, the Maclay's Swallowtail butterfly, that grows on the leaves of the Southern Sassafras tree. So I invited her down here we took off into the forest, a couple of different locations, so I could show her quite mature specimens, where through a permit system, she's able to collect the leaves, take them home, and produce these wonderful butterflies for not only to releasing back into the wild, but also to hand over to Melbourne Zoo, where they'll keep them in their butterfly house, so visitors can see these magnificent creatures very excited to see these butterflies today, but more importantly, have a chat to her and see how she actually breeds these creatures. I've just called into a small track on the side of a creek here, just next to the road, down from my place. And I wanted to show you this magnificent tree. It's the Southern Sassafras. So what is so important about the Southern Sassafras is that the Maclay's Swallowtail butterfly will lay its eggs on here, turn to larvae, eat the leaves, pupae, and then turn into the beautiful butterfly. And this is only one of two trees here in Australia that the Maclay's Swallowtail will lay on. The other being the Tasmanian Pepper. So just to identify this tree, you have these not overly large leaves, but they do have sharp little points and it does come to a point. But on the other side is how you identify them. And this is the silvery leaf. Chris, I'm, I'm raising some of them on this plant, which is from the Sassafras family, Laurelia sempervirens. Do you see them there? Is that the Maclay's swallowtail? Yeah. That's the larvae. Yeah. That's the larvae, yeah. Some people call them larvae, some people call them caterpillars. I think the proper scientific name is larvae. Yeah, so you have eggs, then um, you have larvae, then you have pupae. Yes. And the larger one here, yes. that's larvae? Mm -hmm. Yeah, singular, it's larva, plural, larvae. That's the larvae here. He's actually moving around during the daytime. Yeah, they often do, I find. Um, they're not, they say that they don't, but I, I saw one of these big guys eating yesterday, so um, in the middle of the day. So this is where they are. Here's one around here. What's in here? Oh, no, these are okay. the same guys, but they're on sassafras, thanks to you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and there's another one. Mm. They're so precious. Aren't they? Aren't they precious? Yes. Yeah. There's another one. Yeah. So you just have the cuttings of the leaves mm. in a small jar. Yes. Yes. That, and, it, and, it, and it's a closed jar, so mm. is that to prevent the caterpillar going into the water? Yes. Okay. Because they will look for moisture. I spray them with water several times a day just to make sure they don't get thirsty. You have the butterflies. Mm. They lay on the underside of the sassafras leaf. Mm -hmm. You then you place them in here, mm -hmm. and they grow on this mm -hmm. same plant. And mm -hmm. you can see here where they've all the larvae eaten the leaves. Yeah, and look at this—they strip this bit here. They really like that one. Some of them that I've had breeding in the butterfly enclosure over there, the males have mated more than once. So, but with the maclays, I don't know whether they do that. And all the little black dots and things on the bottom there, those little black balls, what are they? That's called frass. That's their poo, basically. The more they eat, the more they poo. So that's, I took that out. That's, I haven't took that out yet this morning, but I took that out yesterday morning. So that's how much waste they create. Wow. How many larvae do you think you have in that one little patch? Um, I think that I've got, um, 
I think I've got nearly 20 in here. So how long does the egg stay as an egg? I think the egg stays an egg about five days. Five days, turns mm. into larva. And how long is that growing period before it turns into a pupae? Well, that's what I don't know yet. That's why I'm keeping an eye on everything, just so that I can time it. You've never bred the Maclays before? Only by accident. What, I, what wow. happened was I had my potted plants and sassafras. I saw the green butterfly in the garden. I thought, whoa. So I investigated how to breed them. Got hold of some sassafras bushes and potted them up and put them in the garden. I looked at where the flight patterns were. They would come across it, flying from that bush to that nectar bush. They would go right past it. So I yes. elevated it, put it up. Because they're so well disguised, as you can see, I didn't see the caterpillar until it was quite mature. There were two of them. Right. Only two on this potted plant. Yes. I kept it and they pupated and I realised that they would go into diapause, which means butterfly hibernation over winter, and that they would emerge in the spring. So, so those are the only two times. So this is the first time I've had them from eggs on my plants and I've been able to monitor them all the way through. Okay, so you're not sure on how long the pupae not goes sure. for? I know how long the pupae will go through. It'll go through. These ones will go right through winter as pupae. I'll give them to the zoo as pupae. Yep and they will look after them all winter. They'll emerge in springtime. I don't know how long they are as caterpillars. There are two generations. So the first ones that have been in diapause, they'll emerge in the spring, probably around October, November. They will mate, lay eggs, and then that generation will be repeated again. Yes. So there'll be two seasons of them. So hopefully you'll maintain the pupae to continue for the next number of years. Mm, that's what I hope. Yeah. Sue wants 20 or 30, but I've got over excess of 60. And they're still laying down wow. there on my plants. So all these are from wild stock? Mm, wild stock. From that one plant that you had in the flight path? Yeah, from that one and one that I put up in sassafras. And the thing is that if we left them there, very, very few of them would survive. Why? Because of predation? Predation. Okay. I have to keep checking my plant to make sure there's no spiders on it. And what will Melbourne Zoo do with the butterflies that you give them? They will release them into their butterfly house. They are hoping that they'll be able to breed them, but they're going to have to get the right plants for them to yes. breed on. So they breed on the southern on the sassafras, southern but sassafras. also the Tasmanian pepper. Apparently, I had two in my garden in sassafras. I planted them specifically for them. The pepper? But, yeah, but they never laid on it. Okay. This is from Chile, from South America, and it's of the same family. Our friend here who into all his exotic plants. Yes. He's got this growing in his garden in patch. And I've asked him on occasion, do you ever see the Maclay's Swallowtail in your garden? He said, oh, occasionally. And then when I told him I was raising these, he said, oh, I've got a plant in my garden that's um, from the same family as the sassafras from South America. I wonder if they'd eat that. I'll, I'll bring you in some. So he cut a little branch off, threw it on the table here one morning. And as soon as I looked at it, I just saw this butterfly egg on it. I took the leaf of the butterfly. It hatched out to be one of these guys. No way. And so I told him, I said, I, th I think we need to have a closer look at your tree. So he got his enormous ladder and climbed up it and cut a, cut a branch down. I picked it up and it had a mature larva on it. So they're feeding off his, it's from the same family. So what I'm doing here, this is all part of the experiment for the zoo. I'm growing on this. Yeah. And the rest of them I'm raising on the sassafras and we'll monitor them and see how they go. What I'm finding so far, because this is a much fleshier leaf than the sassafras, I'm finding they're growing faster. Really? Yeah. That whether they go through the whole pupation process okay, we'll yeah. wait and see. What is the name of this plant? Laurelia sempervirens. Wow. Are there many people growing this plant? I wouldn't think so. That's pretty freaky that you found a, a plant that the Maclays will be attracted to like that. Mm. Look how furry it is. Yeah. 
see that? That's um, because cold temperatures, they hilltop. Um, what is hilltop? Sure, that's where they, they go up to the highest point in topography. Yes. And they fly around up there waiting for a female to come by. Because, I mean, they breed on tall trees. The male's hilltop. Aren't they beautiful colours? Isn't that green astonishing? And look at the red around it. They're very furry. They've got to keep warm up there. And a lot of butterflies that fly at altitude will be the same. Normally when they feed, they flutter their wings so fast they're just a blur. So if you see a butterfly doing that, yeah. feeding, and its wings are just, it's, you can't really tell what it is, but yeah. it's just, its wings are just a blur, yes. it's in the craze. I mm. read that they have a vibrating motion of their wings. Mm. Mm. Wow. That's just absolutely fascinating. You're very passionate about it, Yvonne. Oh, look, I love it. I love sharing it.